and it's 1300 so let's get started hello everyone uh, welcome to my Drupal Jam reboot session. We're going to talk about uh, some cool stuff. Okay. First of all, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Ruben Tejero. I come from Spain. I'm been working in with Drupal for more than ten years. I've been really involved in the community lately, not even presenting in in, session, in in conferences around Europe, but also you know working you know with the community and trying to contribute to the community as much as, as I can, given my you know lack of a spare time late you know lately. But still, I try my best. Um, and yeah, and recently I'm also contributing to the Mautic community. So we will talk about Mautic later. But yeah, uh, I recommend that you have a look a look at uh, Mautic as well. So I'm doing networking, more networking than actual working, actually. So I'm co-founder of a uh, uh, Drupal. Um, Actually, I have to change that. It's Drupal Group now. So it's a group of companies in, in based in Sweden with headquarters in Stockholm. But we have offices around the, the, the globe. Um, I'm also CTO of Dr. Furen. It's a company in Sweden as well for staffing doctors and nurses. I'm also CTO of uh, Free Your Mind Experience. That is a yoga surfing and kite surfing school down here in Spain. But there you have my Twitter handle if you want to complain about uh, in my session, okay, and provide good feedback. Okay, this is a uh, yeah, Drupal Group, the website uh, of the company I'm co-founder, and we are actually collaborating a lot with the Drupal community, open sourcing a lot of components, and also contributing with patches and back fixes in some modules that we are relying on. Uh, of course, we are hiring. You can go to our uh, careers portal, uh, ugeek.work, and you can find really cool stuff there. Even if you are a freelancer or a company that want to outsource your services, or even if you are um, looking for uh, hiring people, you know, it's uh, both ways. I mean, uh, well, there you can have the connection uh, in, in our platform with our amazing team. Okay, now let's go back to the topic of the session. So I'm really good at naming stuff, as you can see. So I didn't know the, the name for the for for this session. So then I created this stupid acronym that uh, you know is uh, it, it doesn't make any sense, but at least it, at least it, it describes a little bit you know what I'm going to talk about. So it's a dynamic, responsive, universal process automation logic. Yeah, no sense totally. Okay, let's start with the first part, uh, dynamic, responsive, and universal. This is more or less uh, related to the GUI, the graphical user interfaces. I notice, you know, testing different software, not just open source software, but I test a lot of uh, software that uh, people is excited about these days. And then I, I was trying to figure out, you know, what was the key thing that people, you know, connected or engaged more with these, uh, you know, applications of solutions. And it was just the user interface. Actually, you know, one of the software that I tested out is Odoo. Uh, we we use it uh, in our company for a while. Um, it's based in Python. Uh, it's open source, but not fully, fully, fully open source because they have a premium or enterprise components that you have to pay a subscription, you know, to get access to them. But at least until version eleven, they have a lot of you know open source that, uh, stuff and really interesting stuff. And one of the things is these Kanban boards that you can create on the fly, segmenting your, uh, you know, processes or, you know, or your stages, uh, depending on the platform, you know, project management or CRM or, you know, you can just create your, you know, sales pipeline or whatever, or, or, or contact nurturing, you know, uh, funnel or, you know, or, or even create your own process, you know, uh, even for, you know, small common boards, kind of Trello way, you can create, you can create in the same way, right? 
Ive table. It's more or less the same, but they not they are not only relying on uh, board, you know, look and feel or tabular. Also, uh, Odoo had also a tabular that you can see on the top right here. But um, yeah, they are not, not only relying in the command board and in the tabular um, that you have in the bottom right corner, but also they have a calendar, uh, you know, to, you know, visualizing a calendar, what is going on with your uh, processes or with your different actions. Another application that uh, you know salespeople love is PipeDrive or any other similar theorem, and it's more or less the same concept behind Kanban boards and funnels and this thing. So yeah, so you know one of the tools that I we are currently using for recruiting for hiring people is Tim Taylor. It's a Swedish startup, and the same they have a you know like a process description uh, interface that is just uh, this common boards. But the cool thing is they have triggers, some bulk actions and, and this thing. And actually, you know, the, the interface is pretty shiny and, and easy to understand. So that's the thing uh, regarding the user interfaces. So that I saw this trend and then I was analyzing, you know, other parts of this software that they were like, uh, you know, let's say interesting or critical. So this is for the process automation logic, meaning that you, you, you can visualize with a cool user interface, you know, you can visualize your process and you can even create it, but then, you know, uh, managing the process or maintaining or feeding the process with data becomes clumsy and sometimes really manual. Uh, there is a lot of manual work to do. Then the the purpose is always try to automate whatever can be automated and create some logic. Uh, you know, automation logic is uh, is key for me and make it easier for the end users to create that logic is also key. So that's one of the things that I saw, you know, also uh, starting to get popular are what I called uh, decision flow builders. As I said, I'm not really good at naming stuff, but more or less is what I call these little things. One of them, probably the one that you are aware, Sapier, right? Sapier is just an integration system that uh, you know just integrate with Sapier and then Sapier integrates with every, everything. I really love this concept and allows you to create some automation, right? So let's say that I create a blog post and I want it to be shared in social media automatically in all the accounts, you know, or I want to, you know, uh, create some integration with an Excel spreadsheet and, you know, to suck the data from the Excel uh, spreadsheet and, you know, write it down in um, my marketing automation platform, like Mautic, and then you can just do it in a really, really easy way. Then we have more complex flow systems like Node-RED. They specifically tailor for IoT solutions and some other complicated stuff. But I really like the way that you create these diagrams, meaning that you can create your, you can just represent your process using this kind of connectors and this kind of uh, small um, elements that they all have their own uh, you know actions or different uh, uh, different triggers and, and functionality uh, meaning, meaning that you can send a message like a, an email or even as sms or push notification or you can even communicate with a third party api and send data to a third party api easily so Another thing is the Soho CRM that they have also this uh, workflow representation in a top-down like linear thing, and then you can schedule actions and you know, and also uh, add your conditions and so on, um, creating rules and yeah. So this is a cool way of representing it, uh, and also Mautic, of course. Uh, Mautic is a marketing automation platform, software, open source, uh, recently acquired by, uh, by Aqua, 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 okay, whatever. Um, and it's built in Symfony, and uh, they released the version three lately, and it works really well. So if you never try Mautic, but you try before HubSpot, MailChimp, Marketo, or any other super, you know, expensive uh, 
and, and complicated, uh, you know, marketing automation and so forth. Give it a try. You give it Matic a try, and you're gonna like it. And um, it's uh, let's say fully compatible with Drupal, and we are doing wonders with it uh, these days. Actually, Mauticon is around the corner. Uh, I totally recommend that you also sign up for uh, Mauticon. Um, I forgot to add a slide and promote Mauticon a little bit. But still, you know, there is a lot of people from the Drupal community involved in, you know, helping to co-organize, uh, you know, uh, Mauticon. And it's, I guess it could be great if we, we get some love from the Drupal community and, you know, kick, kick it off properly and have a good experience as well. So, yeah, my recommendation, try Mautic and attend to Mauticon. This is all I have to do or to have to say. And um, another, you know, interesting project. I've seen this in uh, the Drupal camp in Vienna with the friends of Acolono. And they have this open trigger button that they, is an IoT connector, you know, and that, they, that, that you know, opens the, the, the internet world to you, right? So you just, you just connect to open trigger any sensor or any application or whatever, and it, it open trigger automatically broadcasts your messages or data to any kind of uh, third party, right? Like Zapier, as I mentioned, also Node-RED is there, and Flashcraft, there is a Drupal 7 distribution uh, based on rules module. Remember the rules module? Yes. So yeah, Flexcraft is uh, like an uh, the if, uh, IFTTT, like if this, then do that or something. Uh, yeah, it's pretty similar to this concept. Like uh, you can automate stuff. When this happens, just do this, blah, blah. And with rules, it was so easy when rules had a really cool user interface in Drupal 7. But now in Drupal 8, it looks like uh, we have to work a little bit on that, but no problem. So open trigger, give it a try. A Colono a company behind it, really nice guys, helping with Mauticon as well. Yeah, nice people. Okay, what about Drupal now? Okay, this is the, the you know this is my let's say vision in the in, in, in the ecosystem of software. Okay, and there is more software of course, but I didn't highlight it because maybe I don't know about it. But uh, I also I highlighted a little bit of you know Drupal projects. But what, what about Drupal per se? What, what what we have done you know with Drupal? So I can introduce Ameba CRM. This was a concept that uh, was born in actually it was in Serbia in Drupal Camp Pannonia, you know in as usual in one of the parties, you know, when we were networking, having a barbecue there, a couple of beers, and then we, we, we defined the Ameva CRM concept together with Floris and my business partners. And then we selected a team of ninjas, you know, to work on that. So we met the ninja coders, they are from Cluj, Napoca in Romania. They're a really young and talented team. Um, yeah, and they build the, the concept in record time using the tools that we already have in the Drupal, in Drupal.org, right? We, we, we use a, reuse a lot of good components that they were necessary and also using Drupal core default functionality. So yeah, just by uh, for the record, you know the ninja coders are looking for new challenges. Uh, it looks like maybe COVID hit them really hard, but it looks like the the company is like um, you know splitting. Uh, and we already hired the two tall guys on the back, uh, uh, but the rest of the people is also uh, available for freelancing and for you know. So we are in the process maybe for hiring more ninjas, uh, but at the moment we hire two because we have an immediate uh, need. And they are working now in the Drupal group with us and continue developing Amiba CRM and, and other cool projects that I'm gonna show you later. So just go to their website, it's still on, maybe until the end of the year. Talk to Christina, who's the CEO, she's super nice. And yeah, maybe you can just you know give them a hand and also hire really talented people, trust me. They work really, really hard, like a ninja. Okay, Amoeba um, CRM, we're focusing integrations in the beginning because it's really difficult, you know, when you approach a customer and say, hey, here is your new CRM. Stop using your CRM and start using this one, you know, and that actually has the same functionalities. It does actually the same, but the look and feel or the interface is different. You know, they're gonna say, yeah, I don't want that. 
you know, even it has a different look and feel, you know, uh, yeah, I don't want to migrate all my data, blah, 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 you know, this, this are actually, you know, one of the big issues, you know, for companies. Now, I know that people are still using Excel spreadsheets, you know, as CRM, because they don't really want to migrate their data and they are terribly scared of, you know, missing something important and blah. So what we did, we started with Amoeba CRM and integrate with Maltic, Swiss CRM, Salesforce and Team Taylor. You can go to the Drupal.org project and then you can just get all this code for free. And um, um, yeah, and also some cool things that we did. Uh, for example, revamping the, UI, uh, the graphical user interface, we, we didn't do anything. <laughs> Actually, we just took a content planner module that is uh, from Lucas uh, Fisher. He's a really nice guy, and uh, I've been talking to him about the future of the project. You know, and yeah, and the, so the idea behind it is that it uses uh, the Drupal uh, the workflows, uh, you know, content workflows to represent the 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 content in different ways like for example here is a calendar uh, you know visualization but you have also a camera board visualization and really really cool and this the calendar uses the published date or unpublished date so you have the the a scheduler like a workflow a scheduler to change the workflow state for your content right the entities so um, this represents when the when there is going to be a change in the workflow we will see that a little bit later and this is the Kanban board um, from a uh, content planner module as well. So it depends on the workflow state. For example, if it's the, the content is in draft state or if it's published or ar archived, then you can represent it this way. Then you, as you can create as many um, workflow states as you want, and then you can just create as many columns as you want and automate all this stuff. It's pretty cool. So talking about workflows, this is the one that we created for uh, Ameva CRM. It's like a sales pipeline Kanban. So we just went to Drupal workflows, uh, you know, as, as, it is, as they are in core, and we created new ones. Like, uh, you know, the full, the full status is going to be contact. And then you have a lead, uh, engage, negotiation, customer, or servicing status. Okay. Um, and these were created just using standard, you know, core workflow functionality and representing it with the content planner module actually we did, we, we submitted a few patches you know to the to the module because it wasn't compatible with all content entities or uh, sorry custom and content entities and you know but still now it's working you can just have a look even the patch uh, probably is already merged by lucas so um uh, this is how the sales pipeline workflows look you know you can create the states, you know, that's how a workflow is, is represented. So um, so the, you just start with the states, that actually the states, uh, they're the columns, you know. So this is easy, it's straightforward, right? Uh, but um, the important thing is in the transition, okay? So transition means where, you know, if your workflow is gonna allow a change, you know, from this state to this other state, meaning that you can create non-linear transitions. Um, that's one of the things that workflow represents really, really poorly. Uh, you know, that's my humble opinion. But, uh, the, you know, this workflow is not represented properly. As you can see, even though this workflow is a little bit linear, uh, you know, you have to read all this, you know, a transition, you know, table in a proper way to understand what's going on. So, for example, you know, the create lead, uh, you know, transition is from contact to lead, right? So, uh, sorry, from contact and lead to lead, right? So, so that that's gonna be the transition, you know. That's uh, that, that's gonna be, that's gonna be the transition that's gonna be happen that's gonna happen when you move an entity or you change your entity status from contact to lead or from lead to lead, right? So that's the thing. Uh, it's a little bit uh, difficult to read, but then when you get used to it, it's cool. Uh, but as I said, I really prefer a different way of representing this because as long as you can start creating trees, like a, you know, like a workflow tree, you know, with different branching and different options, then this gets really, really difficult to maintain. 
Okay. Then you have the create contact. Uh, that is actually the from contact to contact or from lead to contact. Then uh, there is another transition that is called send to Mautic. And this actually when a, a contact or a, an entity, you know, like it's a contact actually, uh, moves from lead status to engage or from engage to engage. Actually, this one, may, I guess they are required. If not, you're not allowed to move the, um, the contact to that state. But actually, you know, as you can see, it's always the, the same, you know, but uh, the important part is when you move a contact from lead to engage. Then what it's going to do is going to automate a trigger, right? That is send to mounting, like send the contact to mounting or send it to Salesforce or Switch CRM or send it over email. So that's actually the part of automation that we work on. And then we added really cool functionalities in. Um, Amoeba CRM, that is this transition triggers. So then when you edit one of these transitions, uh, the one that I said, for example, send to Mautic, as you can see, there is where you select from where to where, you know, from which state to which state. So uh, in this case, uh, you can see this, you know, little collapsible thing on the bottom. It says just to trigger an existing action. So this is a new thing that we added. It's a... Um, Part of the Ameba CRM module that adds this little thing to the workflow uh, transition, and that's where you create your automation. Meaning, what the, when an entity changes from lead or, or engage to engage, then create a contact on Mautic or export the contact to Salesforce. You can create as many actions as you want because this is actually using the core actions module. Okay, so you can see this is the configuration system uh, in Drupal, and then you can see the uh, advanced action, you know, and then you can see available actions. This is actually core actions module, and I guess this is un underrated a little bit, right? Um, because uh, I don't see any a lot of people using the core actions or extend it a little bit, you know, to create as many actions or default actions as you can. But this one, this is one of the or, or, or approaches we wanted to use. Rules is more powerful, but so I, I want to talk about that later. But you know, this is what we did in the beginning as a proof of concept, and it worked really well. You can extend this as much as you want. You can see default actions created, the ones that is playing. In, uh, uh, previously, but uh, you can create more to send the, you know, push notifications, SMS, I don't know, uh, unlimited stuff, or even communicate to a third party as we did with Mautic Salesforce, you know, with any other API, and then you can send a message, webhooks, why not? Uh, open a web socket and create a chatbot, uh, I don't know, this is endless. Okay. So what happened after all this working you, you in, in Ameba CRM? The, what it happened is like we got uh, an idea of uh, pushing this to, to the limits and you know, making even, make it even greater. So we ideated a concept that we call Umanage. You manage is a process manager for automation and analysis. Again, this is the best I can do, you know, to name stuff and describe stuff. So what it, what it does, you know, actually it's process manager. Is uh, yeah, we can create process, you know, or represent it in a, in a good way, right? But which is the purpose is for automation and analysis. Okay, the, the idea is to automate, you know, the process, automate the messaging or the triggers actions, you know, but also have an analysis if the project is effective or not. Where are the bottlenecks, you know? which entities are, you know, stay longer in any specific stage, right? Or which actions take so long to process, to, to be processed, you know? So this is actually what we wanted, you know, to generate KPIs, analyze them and see if a pro process is effective or not. And then you can have different variants or different versions of the same process and see which one is more effective. So we started brainstorming all this stuff and then we ended up in you manage or process manager for automation and analysis. Uh, it's an, it has an scalable architecture uh, because it's not just based on Drupal, but it's supported by other open source technologies like MongoDB, Neo4j. Actually, there is a session about Neo4j just after this one that you should see. 
and it's not because it's uh, uh, from my colleagues, uh, but also uh, you're gonna like it. You know how Neo4j helps you to represent data in a different way and give more context to your data, and it plays really well with with Drupal. We did a lot of work there. So uh, it's also data oriented, meaning that the platform or the process is created from you know having in mind the data first, right? And then we integrated some machine learning algorithms. Um, some of them are building in Neo4j, but some of them we build in ourselves. So we have a, also a company that is due data. Uh, my two colleagues that they're going to do the presentation uh, after this one uh, about Neo4j, they are in the due data team and they are like data scientists, data engineers. They, they, they know how to, you know, keep tidy data and nurture your data. And, to take really good care of your data. Uh, also, we are planning future AI-driven knowledge system, meaning that the process is going to become smart. Uh, you know, one step forward to Skynet. And uh, plenty of third-party integrations that you saw. Uh, there's a roadmap to add even more, you know. And, uh, and on-premise and SaaS solution, meaning that we are going to open source everything that can be open source here, because at the moment it's a mess. But uh, as you can see in Ameba CRM, we have the foundation, and then you're gonna, we are going to continue supporting uh, Ameba, and, you know, and we are going to start opening you managed components, and also your architecture and all you know, definition you know, of stuff, you know, because we really want the feedback from the community. And, so, and then we are offering, as I said, as on-premise, you, know, you can install it on your own servers, or we, can, we will offer a SaaS solution for our, uh, currently we are offering for our customers, right? Of course, 100% open source, we are not gonna rely on proprietary you know, software for this. We don't really want that. And then one quick example about what you manage can do is, for example, you recruit. What is you recruit? You recruit is just a small application or uh, that describes the recruiting process, you know, inside you manage. So that was the first, uh, you know, uh, proof of concept that we wanted to release. It's like if you manage is able to create a process, you know, to, to, to yeah, to, to, to give you the chance that you can create your own process, you know, and then create some stages, automations, and, you know, and see how everything. But we didn't do one single process, we did a lot of processes in Recruit, and I guess the proof of concept was, was a total success. So these are the workflows that we created uh, to define the different uh, processes uh, for the recruiting, you know, we have a really large recruiting team and uh, they, they decided to go ahead with these uh, workflows, okay, the candidates board is one of them, for example, you know, we have a pool of candidates and they must be, let's say, interviewed or, you know, validated and so on, and then, then uh, the first uh, candidate, the first um, state is published, actually, I don't know why published is there, maybe it's Wrong. But then you have match it, meaning that the candidate match uh, uh, any offer, job open or open position that we have. Then if we offer the job position to the candidate, it will, you know, and if it was sent to the client or the client is in reviewing this application, and if it's accepted or declined, right? And then we have the interviews board, you know, this is for the, uh, actually the interviews process inside the recruiting, you know, process. So this is, as you can see, we can go really deep into details. Like if the customer, again, publish, uh, just forget about publish, I guess it's, uh, let's say, lazy, so, so, so lazy developer left publish for any reason or, uh, or didn't change the label. But it's still inbox, meaning that they, we have an inbox uh, for the interviewers to interview. And then they schedule the interview, they, and then the person is uh, accepted, the score, or declined. And then the same for the jobs board. I don't want to go really deep. You can read it the same way. Uh, but you can see, you know, we have a legal board for people sign a contract, NDA agreement, I don't know. A lot of stuff, okay? Uh, actually, there's a betting board as well. Yeah, you will see. It. But this, these are the workflows we represented with the different states as well, you know, and different, you know, um, triggering and actions and so on. But this is the graphical user interface. Uh, as you can see, we just, uh, let's say, 
pimp up a little bit uh, content planner because this is still content planner we didn't get away from it even though uh, lucas has a different you know roadmap for the for the module than us because actually lucas is working in content planner for a customer okay so the, i totally understand that they have their own vision and then we wanted more so then uh, yeah we're gonna plan to decouple you know this uh, interface and do something else uh, but it's still, what you can see here is a content planner with a lot of CSS. That's all. There's nothing else. You know, we didn't do magic. This is still the same concept that Amiva CRM, but just with a lot of, you know, painting colors and cool stuff. And then you can see on the left side, the, you know, the, the boards, the access to the boards and how they're represented with entities. Yeah, I'm not going to go deeper because probably I'm going to do a demo if I still have time. Probably I have time. So, um, yeah, and also it allows you know to select triggers, you know, configure triggers, triggers in the in the state, uh, like in the transition level, right? And then you can see the trigger, like send a message and so on. So again, roadmap. Um, so this is the, the this is what we really want to to do now uh, that we have a minimum viable product, let's say. Yeah, something that works uh, our customers are using a more or less describes their yeah fulfills their needs and describe their processes so they can manage them and it has integrations as well so as you can see uh, i'm going to show you later but the candidate data comes from team taylor directly with uh, an integration so we can just read the, all the candidate data pool you know from a different source we and uh, even sync it in drupal restore it in drupal uh, we can do endless stuff but uh, what is a little bit uh, critical for us now is the automation process, you know, because now uh, the visual representation and the pro workflow management is done, but the automation is not there. I mean, it's almost there. So rules, uh, what's going on with rules? Uh, rules module has the API ready. The, what is lacking is a proper user interface, and that's where I guess everybody is stuck a little bit, right? So what's, what should we do? Uh, probably we should go in the decoupling, right? Uh, like having a new React user interface, and that's probably what we are going to do. We're going to decouple from Content Planner and create a new representation of the Kanban boards and blah, blah. But also we are going to create another way of representing the workflows when you create them and as I mentioned like the workflow tree but also when you create the automation then you have the decision trees right like for rules and blah 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 so these are the three main things we are going to work on as I mentioned automation with rules you know so integrate rules there and new graphical user interface for both content planner and workflows okay um, of course new integrations pending they're all, almost there we have the integration of Odoo already I guess this just couple of things because Odoo is in Python and use RPC messaging. It's a little bit pain in the ass. So the REST API is not there. Actually, it's a component that you have to pay. Yeah, it's pretty sad. But the Rocket Chat is a really, really good integration. We already have it. Uh, and we want to automate a little bit more messaging and all these things and even have a chatbot maybe. Let's see. But these are the, the ones that are coming up. Okay, and we will try to put them also in Ameba CRM because the Ameba CRM is our playground. So we will put this one there. And then I did my homework as well, meaning uh, I'm going to jump here. Let's, uh, let's see if I can do this. These are, you know, technologies I was researching. Um, you know, this is a uh, Flogo. It's like it's like an it's an open source project for event event driven applications. So you know, you can just create your flows, set up your rules, some data streaming, and also connect it to machine learning. So we are considering I mean, an interface with Apache Kafka. So this one the options that we probably will give it a try or at least you know, see. Total JS is not total, like super total, but it has uh, some visual programming interface here that uh, I was trying, you know, with uh, 
yeah, you can see the flow, right? It's a flow diagram, drag and drop components with even visual error handling, real time traffic indicator, meaning where your data goes. And you can send to from data to third parties. This is how you represent your flow. So yeah, something like this. Okay, maybe this is overkill, but yeah, yeah. I guess you get the point. No flow. I uh, mean, it's it's a flow-based programming, you know, for JavaScript. Uh, but uh, yeah, what I like is how it describes, you know, the flows. Uh, yeah. But uh, still, you know, you can go to the example and see, you know, that this this is also maybe overkill. You know, you can represent some uh, Internet of Things flows. You know, the this has its niche. Uh, seriously, I guess we we are really sure that this is also maybe a trend. There's going to be a trend in the future when you have microservices architectures, and then you can want to start to play with them like this, using these nodes, and then see how your data flows from one side to the other. Yeah. Yes. OK. Um, and the last one, Blockly, yeah, probably this one is not uh, the best of the best, but uh, it can be another option, you know? <laughs> Uh, I guess you know this from scratch, right? Uh, this blocky programming language where you can set a variable, do loops, and blah, blah. This can be also an option for rules and some kind of automation. No, no. But this is the, as I say, the research and innovation. Cool. Um, and the last one, ah, I forgot this one. This, uh, this one. Oh. It came when I, when I did this presentation in Drupal Camp Manila. Uh, yeah, someone mentioned, hey, how you try Maestro? And I said, no. And then I give it a try. Uh, it's actually not that bad. The same, it represents a flow, right? You can see a workflow. And then with some, you know, branch, like a branching or even, you know, decision flow, you know. But uh, it's all custom made. So it's not actually using the workflows. The core workflows, so they are, they created their own entities for doing this. But the concept is really good. Give it a try. So there is a Drupal 8 demo, and there is even even a site where you can go there and and try it. I guess it's uh, yeah. Here is the demo. Um, it's like an insurance company, right? That it, you know lets you create a, a specific insurance for your home or for your auto, depending what you select. It gives you, you know, access to one of the other things. Then it, it also has access to the to the demo site. Uh, yeah, you click here. Yeah, and then it explains in really cool videos how to get uh, access to the demo. Then you can log in and see your processes and blah blah. So watch the video tutorials first, and then you can get the access and, and, and try it by yourself. Interesting concept, as I say, uh, maybe not uh, really, really, really related to what we really want to do, but um, it worth to have a look. Okay. And before jumping into the questions, I want to show you. You know, still we still have time. Yeah. So I'm gonna want to show you again. This is you manage. Okay. And you can see what I showed you before, you know, candidates board, blah, 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 job board, uh, interviews, projects board. No, this is for project management, actually, you know, it's for, for managing or the customer requests or the betting board. And then when you edit them, you can see, you know, it's a normal transitions, you know, and that's all. This one is not actually using the actions one uh, in this one uh, because we are revamping the interface. Uh, so I mentioned to make this easier to you know to see the the, the flow tree. But uh, yeah, this is how it looks like. Okay, um, so the, the 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 concept behind the you manage is that you can create your workspaces. Just create here, and then you can just create your recruiting application or your legal application or travel, or you know. So that's, that's, that's the idea. So these are the workspace that you have, and you can click on them and you can install them, you know, as, as you want. And then what you end up is with uh, you know your uh, workspaces here, you know. Like for example, hey, I have the you recruit or legal. Then I go to the recruiting, you know, process. 
and then you can just get your different board. This is the project board with the incoming in progress complete draft. So it's actually project board. Incoming in progress complete draft, you know, and as I say, the publish is the, the, the default one. That's what the reason they leave it there and it's not appearing. Um, these are projects actually, you know, requests from our customers, you know, for, for example, from the New York Times. This is fake data. Don't, 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 don't read it. It's fake news. Um, for example, this is a New York Times news management, you know, and this is a, like a, yeah, we need a, some consulting news management, blah, blah, blah. Um, on uh, 26th of November, you can still apply, you know, United States, you know, during three, nine months. This is the description, blah, 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 blah. These are the positions required for this job, like a backend developer, two backend developers for, with this experience, blah, blah, blah. So we don't have any matching people yet, you know, and it's like, yeah, top skill required Java. And then you can just even search candidates and say, let's see if someone matches here, like uh, back it. Should this work somehow? No, I don't remember how this works. Right? Oh, yes, cool. <laughs> yeah, and then this looks for the people, and then you say, hey, this is, the, this is a rock star. I'm going to recommend these two people. Yeah, so I'm going to try to interview these people. And you can just vote, star, whatever. I don't want to go deeper into this. Uh, you can edit them. This is one of the stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is for the projects. Then the jobs board is just actual jobs that they are like there, like a DevOps engineer, a Drupal developer, the same with its own workflow, you know, coming in progress, complete draft. This jobs board is here. Yeah, exactly. And um, what else? Uh, the same. You can just open this one and it tells you, you know, the skill set, blah, 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 blah. And then you can also go and search and right? say, yeah, I'm going to search for Drupal technologies, whatever. And Drupal was already there as a skills. Yeah. It looks like we don't have any Drupal. Are you kidding me? We have bazillions of Drupal developers in our database. And then maybe I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, doing it wrong totally. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, uh, yes, there are results, you know, you have like a lot of people done. This is one of the ninja coders. He has a diamond. This is awesome. Yeah, the diamond represents that this person is validated and actually has been working with us, you know, for long. So we can just approve this person and also give it a diamond. It's <laughs> diamond developer, expensive as diamonds. <laughs> Okay, I'm betting board. This is for the technical interviews, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't want to go deeper into this legal board, blah, 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 blah. You know, just signing contracts or I don't know, yeah, sign it or decline, whatever. Yeah, this is how we did it. It's as simple as create your workflows, you know, states, you know, transitions, blah, 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 and paint them as cool as you can see them here, just with CSS. Uh, that's all. Uh, this is Jumanage, uh, actually. You know, the cool thing we are working is, is in, in create your own, you know, you manage uh, workspaces, you know, and then a marketplace where you are going to get the workspaces from your, you know, from the community, from, you know, or from third parties you can import them. So, yeah. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you in the demo. I don't think that the. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything else to say, I guess, uh, unless I forgot something. But uh, we can go to the questions, maybe. Um, so I don't know what I should do. So should I keep this in full screen? And then you just ask me questions until you get bored? How you you want to do this? Or should I give access to anyone to talk? How does it work? OK, I'm going to stop. Sharing my screen so I can see you, then you don't get uh, busy, you know, because of the mm, meta screen zoom. Uh, okay, uh, I guess uh, there's still people in the room. <laughs> no one left, um, you know, got bored or whatever. Uh, but still, you know, I don't know if I had to. Um, give permission to someone to talk. Uh, Floris is in the house, so he will handle it. Uh -huh. If people want to jump in, they appear at the bottom. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Hit plus uh -huh. to add them. Uh -huh. 
Okay, anyone wants to talk? No questions? Yeah, this is recorded, so you can watch it later. Then you can see also my Twitter, Twitter handle. I'm gonna show you also my email address if you want to send me spam or whatever, or maybe an email from a prince of Nigeria. Uh, I don't know. Can we integrate this with offline processes as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. For example, offline process. Uh, we are now working with a farm. Uh, a farm has a lot of offline processes because you need to know when you, let's say, harvested or when you put uh, planted the crop or when you just put uh, water the crop or I don't know, endless stuff, right? So there is some offline processes that they can be monitored by sensors, you know, and trigger stuff, you know, in the process itself, right? Let's say quickly, you know, ad hoc, uh, you know, um, concept like a humidity sensor in the ground, and then when uh, when the humidity goes below this, then it triggers some something in one state, and all the you know, let's say all the crops or or land uh, fields that they are in this uh, specific state, they move to be. They, they they move to the state to be water like they are like normal and then they, no they they must be water then you move them into the to be water and then the watering process starts you know automatically or so I hope that you I answered your question Lowry yeah but this is how you can do it uh, we we actually want to do Node Red integration for IoT projects that we have you know down here in Spain for farmers really interesting stuff. Or question? Hey. <clears throat> Thing about the, the, the chatbots and the AI stuff. Yes, so currently uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. I mean I don't think that it's working. But the, we, we did a cool demo with bot press, right? Mm -hmm. Hope that you know BotPress. Uh, it has a really cool workflow. Uh, actually, what I didn't mention this interface. I'm a moron. I forgot this one. Yeah, uh, you know, we, we we were working with BotPress for a while. You know, trying to create some uh, chatbots, and yeah, they they revamped uh, the the interface and they they did really cool things in the last version. Uh, they launched BotPress Alfred or something like that. Uh, Alfred, yeah, it's somewhere here. Yeah. Okay, give it a try. But press is really easy; it's open source. Um, uh, there is a few people from the Drupal community, you know, that they are like uh, contributors or founders of this as well. So give it a try. Uh, I show you a quick sample. It's called Shop Job. and then we created a small. Um, bot press uh, uh, thingy server. And um, let me address it, guys. Yeah, so, and you can just do a shopping bot, like, "Hi, I need uh, clothes." Um, you say, "Sorry, I can't find that item." Okay. Um, Hi, I need uh, uh, shoes, maybe. Yeah, and then you say, "Here is what I found for you: the skills, blah blah blah." And then you say, "Ah, oh, these are cool." And I click there, and I just open the the link to these shoes without even asking the color or the size. So the, the bot knows me perfectly, you know, knows that I'm gonna <laughs> take these shoes, <laughs> uh, whatever. Okay, this is not actually the concept, it was something else, but I don't remember. You know. but, uh, but it has some intelligence, you know, I don't remember, you know, because I didn't do the, this demo completely, but it was like something like, uh, I need a dress, maybe. Uh, I say, say something. Hello, the bot is dead. My God. Okay, I need a last try. Okay. Come on. Hi, give me dress now. Ah, of course, I'm here to help. Could you tell me what color you prefer? Red. Mm -mm. Let's see if I understood. You're looking for an evening dress. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's for the evening. 
yeah, here's what I found. And then he says, yes, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's green. <laughs> it actually, the, the, the bot is uh, a little bit uh, dummy. But, but you Still get the point, training. right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, but you, but you get the point. It, it, this was configured with different, you know, flows. And we added this carousel thing, because actually this, this is a carousel. It gives me more options. Probably I didn't check if there is a red dress. Uh, yeah. And the, for the shoes, there was another, you know, set of questions for the size, or I don't remember. But the, again, please give it a try. You know, both press is really, really crazy. Um, it's a pretty good uh, uh, conversational. If not, give it a try to Rasa. This is the next one I want to try. You know, open source conversational AI. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not as easy as both press, but this is another thing that you should have a look. Okay. And if somebody wants to jump in there at the bottom in your moderation panel. Uh, no. No? I, no, I don't see any. No yet. It's a florist, moderation panel florist. That, that uh, was my other client. Uh, oh, yeah. Didn't have rights to jump in. So <laughs> that's why I jumped in with this one. <laughs> now I added it, okay? It's there. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to jump okay. out. If somebody appears there that's not florist, then you can let them in Click. with a little plus button. Yes. Awesome, cool. Okay. Okay, anyone wants to talk or to say something or questions? Want to see something else? You want to see me dancing? No, I'm not here for dancing, but still. Nothing else? Nope. There is nine people watching. No one is even replying. Dimitri, where are you? you at least you, you were talking in the beginning. Probably Dimitri is left, it's gone. Ah, I can't see who is here, right? No. No, I can't see who is here. Oh, my God. oh yeah, I can see. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, behind my screen, Dimitri, yeah, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thank you, you're the only one actually, you know, a part of Floris and Lowry, you're the only one active. You know, the others probably are, you know, need to build a bot. Yeah, we need a bot, you know, here in, in hoping to answer these questions or, or to ask questions automatically. <laughs> cool. Okay, uh, I'm not going to extend this longer. Uh, you're not using enough patience, Ruben. Deploy patience. Yeah, composer require patience. Yeah, I need a lot of patience, but, I, you know, I have another session in 10 minutes with my colleagues, Alexandra. Ah, I can do promotion, this shameless promotion. This is perfect, you know, look at this. Uh, now that you don't ask questions, then I do shameless promotion. So I go to the schedule and then I go down here, you know, don't miss Floris uh, session. It was already, and so you have to travel back in time and watch it. Now it is recorded, no worries. Uh, yeah, this is mine, and then uh, Jeffrey canceled because some personal thingy, sadly, because Jeffrey is a really nice guy. Ah, it's at the same time like Lowry. Okay, I'm gonna promote both, okay? I'm not gonna be an ass. So uh, this is a session about DevOps, and seriously, Lowry is a genius in DevOps. You, you should go to this. If you are into DevOps stuff, you know, you should watch this one. Definitely, you know, because, you know, you're going to talk about this stuff that you can't even read without, you know, getting a, 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 a shot, like open ID connect versus OAuth2 versus JWT versus TLS, you know, this is serious business, okay? So have a look at this one if you are a nerd, okay, and you want to learn about uh, um, DevOps. But if you are not that nerd, okay, or that uh, technical, and you want something that you can chew a little bit, this is our session about visualizing Drupal.org data in Neo4j. And it's going to talk a little bit about uh, what I show you today, about the you recruit. And you will see some, let's say, deep secrets inside your recruit, okay? Because they actually is connected with Neo4j and some other super cool data science stuff, okay? Uh, shameless promotion over. Uh, so I guess it's time to recap. Um, so then let me finish accordingly with my slides as a pro professional. No, a professional should hide this first, yes. And then what the hell, uh, good. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, it was really good that you were there, quiet, 
not uh, interrupting me every time. Uh, thank you for your questions as well. It was really good hanging out and talking stuff. Uh, enjoy the rest of the Drupal Jam reboot. Actually, uh, I had to give my, you know, really, really big thanks and congratulations to the organization. You are doing a really, really good job. You have almost 500 people signing up. You know, uh, yesterday, I guess, we, there were peaks of 300 or 400, you know, attendees at the same time in hoping. Hoping is working really well, even though it's not happening. So. No problem. And uh, yeah, there again, you can you you find my Twitter email complaint. Please Just send me you know messages like Ruben, your session was crap. You have to improve it or whatever. Okay. Um, yeah, that's all. And um, see you later, maybe in the next one. Okay. Perfect. Bye, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you, Dimitri. Bye. And thank you, Jean-Paul. Cool.